Hello and welcome to Wangaratta Baptist Church. My name is Pastor Aaron. I'm so thrilled that you've decided to join with us today for this message. This message was recorded live at one of our Sunday morning services, which are on every Sunday at 10 a.m. right here in Wangaratta. If you're here uh, in town on a Sunday, then why not come along and join with us in fellowship with other believers as we open the word together and hear from the scriptures. But if you are connecting with us online, don't let this replace uh, coming to a, a local church. Uh, they are vitally important for the growth of all believers. And so get along to your local church. But if not, then, then at least help. let this be a supplement to help you in your walk with the Lord. And so we do believe that the, the scriptures are the inerrant word of God and they're here to train us and equip us. And so we will be speaking and opening up the scriptures together. So, so get your Bibles out and follow along. And I trust that this message that you are watching today will really encourage you and inspire you and help you understand the hope that we do have in Jesus Christ. May it be a blessing to you. Who's, who's never heard of the Gideons? All right, we're off to a flying start. That's good. So the Gideons, now in 200 countries, an interdenominational association of Christian businessmen and their wives and members of Protestant and evangelical churches. Operating in 200 countries around the world and distributing the word of God in 101 languages at the moment and working on more. So far, we've distributed 2 billion Bibles around the world. In Australia, uh, we've reached the 17 million mark in the schools, the hospitals, and everywhere else. A lot of our work is done through personal witnessing, just giving away these little testaments in the schools and personally to people that we come in contact with uh, as we go through life. And they've made a difference uh, in the lives of so many people. The best guy at this was the artist Pro Hart. He used to paint on the back of his little testaments and give them away to people and actually gave away thousands, but eventually stopped doing it when he found that uh, people were selling them on social media and so on for a profit. Uh, if you actually go home and Google uh, Pro Hart painted Bibles, you'll see that they're currently selling on eBay for about $995. be here today and it's because of someone just like you who placed a testament that I'm able to be here today. Um, I grew up in a small town of Kentucky. My parents were extremely young. Uh, my mom, when I was four years old, decided that my brother and I no longer deserved to live and attempted to take our lives. Because of this, the state of Kentucky stepped in and uh, put us into foster care where I spent the next six years moving from home to home lived in about 15 different foster homes, and at the age of 10, had no idea what it was to feel loved or cared for, and already was beginning to have thoughts of suicide. At the age of 10, a family stepped in from Chicago, Illinois, and said that we want to adopt these boys, and they did. And they brought us to Chicago in the promise of a new home and a new start and a brighter future. Unfortunately, that hope was short-lived as my adoptive parents also turned out to be very abusive. At the age of 15, I decided I'd had enough and uh, kind of made this deal with God. And I, I didn't even really believe in God. I, I didn't know who God was. I kind of thought God was like the tooth fairy or Santa Claus. You know, something that people believe in, but when the rubber hits the road, he doesn't really exist. But I made this deal with him and I said, if my life's not better by this day, I'm calling it quits and, and you're gonna have to clean up the mess. And that day came. And it was one of the worst days of my life up to that point, and I, I just decided to call it quits and I tried to end my life. And if not for the grace of God, I wouldn't be standing here before you today. And it was during my stay, I, I ended up in a hospital for eight weeks. And it was during my stay that I met this nurse. Her name was Lori Ann. She was only on our unit this one night. And me being a 15-year-old who was very impressionable, she was kind of cute. 
She looked at me at the end of her shift and she said, you look like someone who really needs the Lord. And she handed me a testament. I don't remember what I read that night, but I remember sitting down on the edge of, of the bed and, and kind of looking through the, the testament. And I prayed this prayer. I said, God, if you're real, I need, I need to know you. I need you to come in and, and change my life. And the most extraordinary thing happened, the best way to describe it is like I had been shivering my whole life, kind of like when you're in the cold and been shivering a long time. I've been shivering my whole life, and all of a sudden in that moment when I prayed that prayer, the shivering stopped. And it scared me because I knew something had happened. I didn't know then, but now I know it was the peace of God. And God came in, and that, that nurse could have just said to me, you need the Lord, but she had a tool to place into my hands to make a difference. I'd love to tell you that my life got better from there, but it kind of got worse. It was like taking steps backward to take forward. My adopted parents didn't like my newfound faith. But God began this work in me, and over time, the good began to win out. And God began to orchestrate an incredible plan that Honestly, today, my wife and I will be sitting around the table just talking about what God's done, and it blows our mind, the things that he can do. So I heard a speaker earlier say, can, can one Bible, can one testament make a difference? I am here today extremely grateful for what you do because it made a difference in my life. So thank you so very much. That's, that's from personal testimony. Isaiah 55, 11. Uh, very dear to the hearts of all the Gideons, and we see that over and over again. We're probably best known for the Bibles in the hotels and the motels. Uh, when we travel, they make a difference too. Hey everyone, I'm Pat Steele, and I want to share a little bit of my story and how Gideons has been a part of that. Uh, I was addicted to drugs from a very young age, never knew God, and uh, by the time I was 17, I was, I was really, really sick. I had to have my uh, part of my right lung removed, about 85% uh, the lobes of my, my right lung. And you'd think I would have stopped smoking after that, uh, but I didn't. I was, um, I was so addicted, I was so broken and hopeless and living in fear and pain. Uh, by the time I was 20 years old, I was living up in Sydney and I'd become addicted to ice. And um, <clears throat> this drug just completely destroyed my life. I was living on the streets and uh, I got really sick again, ended up in hospital. The doctors basically told me I was gonna die uh, because my other lung was completely destroyed and couldn't have a lung transplant. Uh, so with nowhere to go, no one to turn to, uh, I just tried to take my own life three times in one week. Um, and it wasn't through lack of trying um, that, that I wasn't dying. Uh, I, was, I was really trying and, and to be honest, I felt like I couldn't even get that right. <laughs> and so I remember feeling that at the time. It's like, I can't even kill myself. How hopeless am I? Uh, but after the third attempt of taking my own life in Sydney, I woke up on a hotel room floor in Wollongong called Piccadilly Hotel. And an old friend of mine, uh, who lived at the hotel, uh, she had given her life to Jesus. And, and when I woke up that morning, uh, she, was, she was standing there and she said, Pat, Jesus loves you and he's your only hope. And I was like, ah, I was so angry. I was like, I don't believe in God. And if I go into a church, I will catch on fire. I remember I was just so mad. And so she went off to church, it was a Sunday, and uh, I remember just sitting there thinking, why would I catch on fire if I walked into a church? This is crazy, I don't even believe in God. Why, why am I afraid of a God who I don't believe in? And in that moment it clicked, and I realized that God is real. And if he really does love me like she told me he does, maybe he could help me. And, you know, I think of Psalm 34, verse 18, and I think of this, you know, that God is close to the brokenhearted and he rescues those whose spirits have been crushed. And that was me. <laughs> I was brokenhearted, my spirit was crushed. But, uh, but what I want to share with you guys um, is that that night after that happened, 
I, uh, I went back to uh, the hotel where my friend had told me about Jesus, that he loved me and that he was my only hope. And there was a stack of Bibles there. And, uh, and she took, um, she took uh, one of the Bibles off this stack. And uh, I know now that what had happened was uh, somebody from Gideon's had been through and they just replaced all the Bibles in the room. And so this stack of old used Bibles was sitting there in the hallway. And she gave me this Bible and that night I began to, to read it. And that in itself is a miracle because I hadn't been able to read my whole life. Uh, but Holy Spirit began to, to, do, uh, to, to, to make the words on the page make sense to me. And so um, this was the first book that I've ever read in my whole life. And I still have it today. And since then I've done uh, Bible college uh, and I had to read a lot of books for Bible college. I've managed a business um, and done all these amazing uh, things. I'm now in ministry. Um, I work for a local radio station uh, where I'm sharing the gospel every day and another, a, a number of other ministries where, um, where we're sharing the gospel through different, uh, through different ways and things like that. And, uh, I knew that I was healed. Uh, I mentioned before that, that my, my, my lungs were diseased. Uh, I knew that I was healed because I wasn't throwing up blood and black stuff anymore. I didn't realise how healed I was until a number of years later when I went for an <coughs> unmet checkup. Uh, and they did a scan and, and the doctor uh, came back with the scans and he couldn't believe it. He actually went back to radiology and checked that they were mine and then came back and said, I cannot explain this, but you have two perfectly healthy lungs. It's scientifically, medically impossible, but nothing is impossible for God. He delivered me from addiction. He healed me, but most importantly, he gave me a brand new life. I was dead in sin, but now I'm alive to God in him. I was in darkness, but now I'm in the light. And, uh, and I'm just so thankful to Jesus. I just want to say thank you uh, to, to all of you because, uh, you know, you, you may not understand fully um, the potential of the seed that you are sowing when you put one of these Bibles in a hotel room. Um, you might not necessarily see the immediate fruit from the seed that you're sowing. Uh, but like any, uh, like any seed, you, you water the seed with faith until you see the fruit. And, um, and I want to say to you, like today, like me standing before you uh, through this video, uh, I'm the fruit of your obedience to sow these seeds and to put these Bibles in hotel rooms and hospital rooms and handing them out on the street. There are, there are people like me, thousands and thousands and thousands of people like me who have been impacted by the ministry of the Gideons. And I want to say thank you uh, because you make this possible. As you know, we go into the schools. Uh, very hard to get into the schools in Victoria, um, far more so than in New South Wales. Um, that's just one of the battles we have. But even in the schools, it makes a huge difference. Hi there, my name's Luke Harris and I'm the pastor of Empower Church. And uh, I just wanted to share with you today for a couple of moments, my story of when I first uh, had an encounter with the ministry of the Gideons. It was in grade 11 of high school that I came to faith in Christ and I can clearly recall the day that these two gentlemen came from the Gideons and they presented boxes of new red New Testament to senior year levels of our high school. I don't remember much of what it was that they said, but I do remember one line where they said, these Bibles are red on the outside and we hope for them to be red on the inside. Because I remember there being an audible groan, but can I say, Almost 20 years on, I still remember that line. I also remember that straight after that school assembly, my fellow students were ripping their Bibles up. I remember seeing some of them 
throwing them on the ground and stomping on them. I saw Bibles going into bins. I mean, there were some that put it in their school bags, but there were plenty that were trashed and ripped and thrown on the ground. But I want to say to those gentlemen, I want to say to those that are continuing to do the good work of the Gideons, that this student loved that gift that day. And in fact, I used to cherish that Bible. I took it with me to school every day. I read it during lunch hours. And in fact, still to this day, I have my Gideon's Bible. And uh, I keep it as a memento of those early years of faith. And I remember uh, one Sunday night, my pastor sharing a message on evangelism and the importance of the Great Commission out of Matthew 28. And I was so inspired about starting to share my faith with my fellow students that I went to the vice principal of the school and I said, are there any more of these Bibles left over? He said, yep, there's about a half a box there. I took them, I put them in my locker and I started going around during the lunch hour and just sharing my faith with various students in my high school, caring for them, looking after them, specifically looking out for those that everybody else was rejecting to just show them the love of Jesus. Do you know in those next 18 months, there were 23 students they came to Christ, and every single one of them, I gave the gift of a Red Gideon's Bible. So I want those gentlemen to know, from 1996, their donation to the senior year level of Caloundra State High School, that their seed was by no means wasted. It encouraged the salvation of two dozen students, including my own. We go to the universities and the colleges. Uh, down in, in Melbourne, there are five universities that we approach. Uh, we do this each year. We got in just before COVID last year, but 2018, uh, we were able to give out 18,000 copies of the Word of God. And to have the Word of God when you went through COVID, I think for some of those students, must have been a real help. Hi, my name is Craig Rochelle. I'm the pastor of LifeChurch.tv, and so much of what I'm doing today is a result of how God used the Gideons to get God's Word into my hand to transform my life. When I was in college, my fraternity got in a lot of trouble. I was the ringleader in many ways of the trouble, and so as a PR move, even as a non-Christian, I decided to start a Bible study. The only problem was I didn't own a Bible. And the day that we were scheduled to have our Bible study, I was walking from one class to another when a gentleman, a Gideon, offered me a free green New Testament Bible. I can remember distinctly thinking, wow, if there is a God, he must have just worked through that guy. And sure enough, through the Bible, in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, I read that you're saved by grace through faith. It's not of yourselves. It is the gift of God so no one can boast. And that's when spiritually I was born anew, forgiven of all my sins by the grace of God through faith in Jesus Christ. To all those who serve in the Gideons, thank you for investing in me. For all those who are investing in the Gideons, thank you for making a difference in thousands and thousands of stories just like mine. The living word is active, powerful. Thank you for getting it out. We go to the hospitals, where we can, we go to the armed services. Uh, this was an offering. Uh, there was no order to come and get one, but the armed services in uh, South America were offered scriptures and they was the, the number of men that turned up to get a free Bible. We offer them to emergency services. Uh, just this year in Wangaratta, I took in a, a box of the Little Testaments like this to the police station in Wangaratta. Uh, there were, I think there were 70 in the box when I took it in. Uh, three months later, I went back to pick up the box and they said, no, it, it's all gone. So planting that seed makes a difference. We also go into the prisons. We have contact with... Uh, Pauline Middleton from the Salvation Army up at Beechworth Prison, and we keep her supplied with Bibles. We're not allowed into the prisons anymore. Uh, Jenny used to do that in the women's prisons, uh, but she keeps supplying the scriptures to the prisoners 
uh, wherever she can. I got involved in drugs while I was in dental school, thinking that I could do both. He had graduate student by day and doing drugs and partying. Well, this whole time, my parents, they had been a Christian for several years now and just had really grown in their faith. My parents uh, knew the only way they would be able to see me since I wanted nothing to do with them. They actually flew, flew down to Atlanta one time, and after the second day, I kicked them out. But my dad, he wanted to give me something, and it was his very first Bible, and he left it on my kitchen counter. But as soon as they left, I took his Bible, and I threw it in the trash can. My mom prayed that God would do whatever it takes to bring this prodigal son to the Father. Well, this miracle, this answer to prayer came one day with a bang on my door. I opened up my door, and on my front doorstep were 12 federal drug enforcement agents, Atlanta police, and two big German shepherd dogs. I just received a large shipment of drugs, and they confiscated all my money and my drugs, and I was charged with a street value equivalent of 9.1 tons of marijuana. I was walking around the cell block, and I passed by this garbage can, and as I looked at that garbage can, I felt like I was looking at my own life, and I was about to pass by that garbage can, but something on top of the trash caught my eye. I bent over, and I picked it up, and it was a Gideon's New Testament. I took that New Testament back to my cell, and for the very first time, I opened up that New Testament and I read through the entire Gospel of Mark. And as I know today, what we have in our Bibles is not just ink on paper, but what we have in our Bibles is the very breath of God. And it's living and powerful and sharper than any double-edged sword. And as I began to read God's Word, it began to penetrate me and it began to cut through my stubborn, hard heart. He revealed his plan for my life, and he called me in full-time ministry while I was in prison. So the greatest miracle of this whole story is that actually Moody accepted me. I was released from prison in July of 2001, and I started the very next month. I'm teaching now back at Moody in the Bible department, so I tell people I went from prisoner to professor. Only God can do that. And yet we still have billions of people around the world that don't even know Jesus. We had in our reading about the light shining in darkness. Uh, we sang about the darkness fleeing, and yet there's still so much darkness out there. The potential is enormous. Our aim for 2020 was 120 million scriptures. Did not happen. <laughs> we don't know when it will happen. But even so, they've been able to send scriptures to Cameroon. Cameroon had three major cities. They called in the Gideons from other smaller towns to help out. And over a week, more than 80 Gideon and Auxiliary were able to distribute over a quarter of a million scriptures. God led the way. They got into schools that they'd never got into before. They got into hotels they'd never got into before. And so God blessed that effort to give out the scriptures, to, to shine that light in darkness. We see ourselves as partnering with the churches. Uh, the Gideons aren't a church. Those people that are saved, we say, go and find yourself a Bible-believing church and join in with that fellowship of fellow believers. We ask you to pray for us. As I said before, the, the schools are really hard to get into in Victoria. They are, they are hard in New South Wales too, but nothing like Victoria. Um, that's, that's just the government policy down here. We mainly get into the church schools, Galen College uh, and Cathedral College, both of those are Year seven will normally take around about 200 testaments and that still changes lives. So please pray for the work of the Gideons. You might consider joining us or becoming a friend of Gideons. A friend of Gideons hasn't got to go to the meetings or anything like that. Each year they're able to buy 50 of these little testaments. One of the testimonies before was talking about a little witnessing tool. This is a fabulous witnessing tool speaking to anyone that you might come across. The costs, the Bibles that we're giving out and putting in motels around about $5, 
These little testaments now, about $1.55. Three of those, about the same price as a cup of coffee. So yes, if you can help us, that would be much loved and it would make a real difference in people's lives. We have Gideon cards, you can speak to Jenny afterwards. We have a Bible app. The Bible app has over a thousand languages that you can download. So it's not a matter of someone doesn't quite understand the scriptures and hearing it in your own language, as, as we heard Merv read this morning, makes a huge difference. So from us this morning, thank you. It's a great husband and wife ministry. Uh, Jenny and I have been in it for 28 years. Uh, Graham and Pauline, uh, I think they've just passed the 45 year mark. There must be something good about this ministry to do it for that long. And we've certainly seen the blessing and seen God's Holy Spirit working over and over and over again. So thank you.